Okay, this is one more addition to the spring mass system. We already have talked about spring mass system when we said or when we said that um, the uh, the differential equation for this is written as x square <coughs> plus omega square x equals zero, and we derived this equation where omega square is k over m, k is the spring constant, m is the mass of the object. Now there's a there's a what happens. This is really an ideal situation in real life. Uh, we have friction present, or there's some sort of called damping present. For example, let's say if this mass is being put in a jar which is full of some liquid then this then this mass is going to oscillate but we know that after a while it will stop because the the water is going to uh, damp the oscillations the damp the oscillation and in practical uh, ex experiments, in experiment it has been found out that this damping is because the fluid is pro is providing an opposing force to the motion. So if the mass is going down, the, the fluid is providing a force upward. So if you make a free body diagram of this, so we know that, um, well, there's a, so what are the forces acting? There's a force of a spring acting. Now you may be wondering if there's a force of gravity. Well, if you start with a situation when you already have suspended the mass, then there will be an extension in the spring, elongation in the spring, and that will simply cancel the, uh, the force of gravity. So if you start with this as your initial initial situation and then later elongate or stretch it to make it perform oscillation up and down then you do not have to consider gravity because our gravity has already been taken care by some stretch in the spring we are not interested in that spring in that stretch uh, we uh, we start with a system when the effect of gravity has been cancelled by the spring con the spring force, and then we let it oscillate after we ourselves provide a stretch in the spring, and then it oscillates. So in principle, you can sort of assume there are forces acting, some spring force. We know this is acting, and there's a force of gravity acting, but we already assume that they are already cancelling each other. They have already cancelled each other because we start with the rest position. This is the rest situation. So what we are left with is actually uh, that when the object is moving, we are left with some additional spring force that is because of the motion, and uh, the object is uh, actually, let's say, um, this is the mean position. So this is the mean position. An object is somewhere down, let's say a distance x. from the mean position. So if the object is distance x from the mean position, we know the force is going to be the, in the opposite direction and this, it's applying a force kx. Okay. And object is moving down with the velocity v because it's, it's still, so it will keep moving with the velocity v and there's a force acting in the op opposite direction. So this object is going to slow down and it's sort of going to reach somewhere here when the velocity becomes zero and when the velocity becomes zero then it's, it's going to reverse its direction of motion and start moving towards the, the mean position but right now it's at distance x from the mean position it's moving away from the mean position with the velocity v it's being counteracted by the spring force kx because spring force is always the um, the, the restoring force and uh, there's one more force which is because of the damping of the water or liquid. The liquid is providing a friction or damping. And this damping in practical applications is given as B times V.
So it's proportional to V. The higher the V is, the more the damping is. Where is the velocity? And V is some constant. It's called the damping constant. So it's a damping constant. And this BV is going to act again in the opposite direction of motion because the, damp the job of damping is to slow down the motion. So if you rewrite this equation, which we started by writing mx double dot plus kx equals zero, Newton's law. Then you have to write mx double dot minus uh, a bv plus kx equals zero. Let's see if this is right or not. Okay, so the differential equation will be this. So this is going to be the differential equation for the motion and the solution of this differential equation we really do not want to talk about that we know that v is x dot and the solution is given as x equals a e b over 2m where e is called exponential is a function cos omega t plus phi and omega is given as k over m minus b over 2m squared. So this is the solution of this equation. So what we see that x is changing um, in time. In fact, there should be a t here because changing in time. So x is changing in time uh, sinusoidally. You see it's it's a cos cosine wave, but on top of that, the amplitude, the whole this amplitude, you see, is also decaying. This function becomes um, um, smaller and smaller as we move forward in time. So we see this whole product actually becomes smaller and smaller as we move in time. So that is what is happening here. The amplitude keeps on becoming smaller and smaller. And the cosine is still keeps become ke remains a cosine with the same omega. You see, the omega is still the constant, which means the time period is still the constant. But if you remember, omega was actually root k over m for undamped oscillator. But here in this case, omega has changed because of damping. So what is the effect of damping? The effect of damping is that omega changes. First of all, the time period or the angular frequency has changed. And second, the amplitude decays in time. The amplitude is decreasing with time. So these are the two effects. And uh, for, I mean, we really cannot talk much about uh, damped oscillation at this level, but actually there is a whole lot more than this uh, when we talk about damped oscillation.